Paul Stanley, welcome. Oh, it's terrific. Can sure. I get the whole fan thing out of the way first before we get to the serious interview? You're Paul Stanley. I am. I woke up this morning and I was still Paul Stanley. Here's my bedroom oh my when God. I was 13. Ah, so I, you got unmasked there. You yeah, got totally. the post from unmasked and uh, super stuff. And your picture's all over my wall. Well, uh, you, you chose well. Yep, yeah, that's the second one. There, that's me. Ah. So that's quite impressive, that tongue. It's not quite as long as Mr. Simmons, but... But, you know, interestingly, that's not dissimilar from the guitar that I learned to play on. True. You know, a nylon or gut string guitar. That's right. Yeah. That's what I love about your band. Terrific. Real musicians. That's what you guys are. I'd like to start by reading a review from May 27th, 1974, printed in the Seattle Daily Times. Tell me how you feel when you hear this. Okay. Music review. I hope the four guys who make up the group whose names don't matter are putting money away for the future, the near future, because Kiss won't be around for long. Mm. He said in 1974. Ah, sweet vindications. You know, um, I think he has uh, not stood up as well as we have. I have no idea where he is at this point. But, um, you know, some people just don't get it, and they don't get it right. Um, And that really has more to do with them than us. You know, when somebody is so vehement about a point of view, it really really reflects on on their own issues rather than ours. I mean, um, whenever I see something that's really scathing to this day, I go, what's your problem? You know, I mean, is it really that important that that it it riles you up like that? So, in this case, you know, th- this guy, uh, you know, I, I had a chuckle even back then because I knew he was wrong. You know, you 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 don't want to have a blind belief in yourself, but at the same time, you also, uh, you know, you you have to to champion your own cause, believe in it, and and move forward. So, naysayers, you know. There, there are obstacles that you, you look past. What has kept you going? Over 40 years, there's been some, some challenging times for you, some dodgy haircuts for the band here and there, people passing away, there's yeah. been illness. There's, yeah. What's kept you going? Because it's, it's just quite incredible to see the journey this band's been on. Passion. Um, if you find your passion in life, you're, you're very, very lucky. And... Um, I, I urge everybody to find what they love because um, Mark Twain said, um, to paraphrase, if you find something you love doing, you'll never work a day in your life. doesn't mean I, I, that um, my days aren't strenuous, that, I don't, that they're not taxing, but I love what I do and I'm passionate about it. And um, I never did this to be a pop star. I never did this to, to um, be the flavor of the week. I love music, and I love uh, everything that goes with it, from Kiss, you know, to Soul Station, you know, to have a 13-piece band that that plays uh, Motown and Philly Soul, you know, just just music in general is, is uh, so so life fulfilling and, and uh, life affirming. I'm I'm just uh, passionate about what I do. But on Soul Station, you've done that. This is a, a recent venture. Yeah. Then there was Phantom of the Opera, yes. somewhat, 15 yeah. years ago. What, yeah. what, what is left for you to do? There's always something new. What's um, in your mind? What do you want to do? Um, other than um, taking Soul Station out and doing a bunch of shows, um, there's always something new. Um, I, I, you know, I can't really tell you to have a successful side career painting and uh, to do theatre... And uh, all the other things I've done, it's uh, it's fabulous. And I, I don't have any plans. I just wake up every day and, and am open to whatever is around me. Let's talk about your brother from another mother, mm. Gene Simmons. Mm. Double barrel question here. What's the best thing about working with him for so long? And what's been the most challenging thing about working mm. with Gene Simmons? Interesting question. Um, the best thing... Um, I have to pause. <laughs> um, I think the security and the familiarity. There, there's no, there's no substitute or, or anything that comes close to to being with somebody for forty some odd years. You know, um, forty six years, I think, at this point. So um, that that is a, a blessing. It really is a blessing to to have that kind of relationship. 
Um, and also within that, you define the, the terms of it and the boundaries. And, and um, I think what works so well for us is giving, giving each other space and yep. respecting our individuality because we're very, very different. Um, as different as we once were, we've certainly become more that or, or stronger in our differences. So um, I think uh, the best part is, is everything that's grown out of 40, 46 years together. You're both in good shape. You're in good shape. I you're can't f- speak for him. <laughs> <laughs> in your 60s, you're in good shape. Has there always been this, uh, I guess, unwritten rule of no drugs between both of you? Because that, that, that impresses me and amazes me. Um, you know, you know, speaking for myself, when I was much younger, certainly there was, um, you know, there was there was some pot smoking and, and stuff like that. But you know, um, you know, and one or two pills of, of of different sorts. But you have to remember that um, there was a time where um, I don't want to say drugs were more pure, but there was less. Less chemistry and less less um, bootleg and counterfeit stuff floating around, and we didn't have the kind of data we know exists now that that tells us that certain things will just lead down a, a, a terrible things. path. Yeah. But I found that very quickly and very early, not because of personal experience, but by looking around me yeah. and seeing people die. You know, people I knew dying. Um, at young ages from from drugs and and excesses and then I saw people's careers derailed by drugs and excesses so I think you have to be an idiot or have a predisposed um, illness of sorts which is not a derogatory thing to say but some people just are um, have a kind of like a, a a bent chemically or, or um, psychologically towards addictions. I'm not one of those people. And uh, to, to jeopardize my life or my future, my health, it just never, never made sense. I mean, it's, to me, it's so illogical. And yet, I'm not necessarily saying that holds true for other people. But mm. for me, it, it just it made no sense to see what was killing other people and saying, sign me up. I want to talk about rumours. The band, especially during the early days, always rumours floating around, you know, obviously in the gossip magazines, etc. There was no internet back in those days. One I heard, which was fantastic, which I believed for a while, that you were actually Van Halen with makeup. Mm. Um, what was the craziest rumour that you heard about yourselves? Well, the, the, the oddest to me was always, you know, and it's always persisted over time, was, is that I'm gay. And it's, it's an interesting thing because... If I were, I'd be proud to be whatever I am. As long as you're you're a good person, you know, sexual orientation and stuff like that is totally irrelevant. But that being said, you know, besides having, you know, four children, honestly, I never saw a guy where I said, "Gee, that's a that's a close second to a to a woman." <laughs> I, I, you know, I. Honestly, I never looked and said, you know, if I can't have that girl over there, I'm taking the bloke. You know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, so that's always been really interesting that, that some people can't, um, find a way to, to take my comfort with sexuality, um, to, to, uh, to misreading it as something it's not. Yeah. But that being said, I, I more scratch my head at that, but so that that's always been something that was and is um, persistent, and I just kind of go, well, you know, whatever. The, the the boys may not understand, but the women always <laughs> they they got it in oh. more ways than one. <laughs> You're a legend, Paul Stanley. Mm. Uh, touching on your kids, uh, yes. they're beautiful. We see pictures they're wonderful. from time to time. Yes. Um, do they travel with you? When, when you? As much as possible, but um, it would be unfair to impose my life on them. Yeah. In other words, I'm home, you know, the lion's share of time. I make sure our tours are never more than three weeks maximum. 
um, because I want to be home with my kids. Um, as much as I, I adore um, performing and, and being with fans, I have a, an obligation and a, a passion for being with my, my family. So um, when possible, they, they come with us come with me and if not then we we just um arrange the tour so it's uh, doable speaking of the tour i've seen the band i think five or six times with makeup without makeup 3d glasses at wembley the whole thing this looks different this really does look different for the uninitiated for those who haven't seen a kiss show what are they going to see i think honestly as a totality the band's never been better you know it you, you can always dissect and say, well, this is better, this isn't as good, but as a total package, the show just has never been better, the band's never been better, um, the band's just firing on all cylinders, and, um, you know, we were joking before, the reviews look like I wrote them, you know, it's, it, they couldn't be much better, and uh, it's, it's amazing to to ask the audience, which I do, how many of you have never seen us before? And it's a good, good, um, I don't want to say smattering, it can be 30%, 40%, and that's terrific because you you have a, a legend, a myth, whatever you want to call it, that has uh, permeated, you know, time, and you have to live up to it. And it's amazing to go out there and have people at the end of it just go, wow, they are who I heard they are. I have one more question. There is once again a story doing the rounds that if you and Jean decide to retire, mm. that you will be replaced. Yes. True? Yeah. Wow. I, well, you know, I can't imagine that. Well, there was a time nobody could imagine replacing Peter then nobody could imagine replacing Ace. So those people, you included probably, are 50% wrong already. But you're the singer, you're the yeah, sound. Yeah, but, but I'm not the only person capable of doing what I do and also moving the band forward. Um, you know, it, as, as much as I respect and actually admire what I've done within the band I didn't I didn't invent this I am a a mixture I am you know a, a composite of all the people who inspired me and um, there are other people out there who probably take in those same inspirations and add me to the mix so you know why why not why not it's more about believing in this this concept of, of being passionate about what you do, giving 100%, respecting your audience, and always trying to be better than you are. So I don't have a, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have the, the monopoly on that. And uh, so it, it, it's, it may be inconceivable to someone else, but from where I sit, I'm sure there there's, more than one person out there capable of doing what I do. Not a carbon copy of yeah. me. But not just yet. Not yet. No. You know, I have a show tomorrow. Absolutely. <laughs> like to end on uh, a bit of a gift. A good uh -huh. friend of mine owns a, a wine label called Ha Ha. And we're going to the show tomorrow night and we both discovered Kiss at the same time. We were 12. And uh, it's his way of giving back. It's terrific, you know. So on Twitter, you like your red wine. Yeah, you know, um, but, you know, I, I have to say, nobody makes a Sauvignon Blanc like, you know, the, all the Marlboro Sauvignon Blancs are just off the hook. So, um, you know, they're, they're quite something, too. You know, your Kim Crawfords and your Cloudy Bays and, you know, what have you. So, Well, you will like that drop as well. I'm sure you will. I'm sure I will. Good Pinot. Great. Good to meet you. Pleasure.